bringing museum audiences, architects, architecture students, and architecture enthusiasts together to hear some of the greatest minds discuss their perspectives on the built environment. Finally, I'm also pleased that the museum is the site for these talks. New friendships and partnerships have blossomed from these meetings. It is with great pleasure that I turn the podium over to Matthew Knox, professor and department head of architecture at Kansas State University to introduce tonight's honored guest. Matthew. Thank you, Catherine. Welcome everyone and thank you for coming. Uh, a few words about the Victor Rear and Distinguished uh, Visiting Chair. Um, the chair was established in 2003 by the children of Victor and Helen Rainier to enrich the educational experience of Kansas State University architecture students by exposing them to the finest architects from around the world. Responsibilities of the chair are to co-teach a fifth-year uh, architectural graduate studio in close cooperation with the Kansas State architecture faculty member. The chair is encouraged to contribute to the theory segment of our curriculum as well through seminar presentations devoted to topics decided between the chair, faculty, and students. Exposure to all out levels of students will be possible through involvement in review, projects, or events. It is expected that at least two formal lectures be presented, one on campus for Kansas State students, faculty, local professionals, and the local community. The other, a lecture delivered in Kansas City metropolitan area providing exposure to alumni, practicing professionals, and the greater Kansas City community with special linkage to the arts. And again, thank you for the Nelson for hosting us. Successful implementation of the Victor L. Rainier Visiting Chair relies upon a strong positive communication between the visiting chair and the individual K-State architecture faculty member collaborating with the chair. This year, the chair has been working with Professor Jay Stephen Morgan, a former Rainier chair himself. Uh, this year, the studio, accompanied by Professor Stephen Morgan, traveled to Spain in the fall semester to choose a site for the two-semester project. Since then, the chair has made several visits to K-State to work with the studio, including a lecture on campus, and now tonight here in Kansas City. The chair and the studio met yesterday with the distinguished jury to review the final studio projects. And I see the students are in attendance tonight as well. So. Um, past visiting chairs include Gonzalo Byrne from Portugal, J.C. Ben Morgan from now Manhattan, Kansas, um, Stephen Ehrlich, California, Javier Sanchez from Mexico, uh, Beat Kempfen from Switzerland, Wendell Burnett, Arizona, uh, Helen Strangland and Reinhold Kropp from Norway, Alan Dunlop from Scotland, Alfred Jacobi from Germany, Miguel Ango Roca from Argentina, Mika Heikkinen from Finland, Alberto Campo Bieza from Spain, and Hiroshi Hara from, from Japan. Quite an impressive list. Students and faculty are, at K State are deeply thankful for the generosity of the Rainier family for making this possible. The 2017 2018 Victor L. Rainier Distinguished Visiting Chair is Fran Silvestre from Valencia, Spain. Having graduated in architecture at the Escuela Tecnica Superior de Arquitectura de Valencia, my apologies to the beautiful Spanish language, um, in 2001, um, he specialized in urban planning at the Eindhoven University of Technology a year later, and he was awarded a scholarship to work at the studio of the Pritzker Prize winning architect uh, from Portugal, Alvaro Assisa, who he continues to collaborate with to this day. He is currently a professor at the Universidad Politecnica de Valencia and the Universidad Europea. Franz Silvestri Arquitectos, founded in 2005, is an internationally recognized multidisciplinary group uh, with work in Europe, the USA, Russia, and most recently China. Uh, known for truly amazing residential works and amazingly beautiful furniture, the studio is expanding into larger scale work. They have won regional, national, international awards for their work and publication in many magazines such as CA, Architectural Record, just to name a few. His office uh, is influenced by what is clearly a vibrant and rich culture of architecture in Spain and architects like Siza and the sculptor Andre Alfaro, among others. The rich culture is, of the region is a deep well. K-State has been happy to drink from multiple times as our 14th Rainier Chair, Ferran Silvestri, is our second architect from Spain. 
The work of the studio is one of simple values of economy, continuity, innovation, accuracy, and dialogue. They produce work delightful in its, its geometric, geometric simplicity, a simplicity always refined by a play of sophisticated light imbuing profound richness. To describe the work, I need to borrow a phrase from one of my old grad school professors who used an Epicurean expression when he really liked the work. And he said, the work makes my mouth water. And I think when you see this, this work truly does make you hungry. Um, it's been a tr true joy to work with Ron and his partner, Maria Masia, who unfortunately couldn't make it this uh, trip because she's too busy keeping the office afloat back in Spain. Um, but this time he's joining him from his office uh, for this trip is Pablo Camarasa. So welcome, uh, Pablo. In recognition of this honor, I'd like to present this medal from Kansas State University um, to our 2017-2018 premier chairs. Ron, if you could come up, please. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you very much to everybody. Thank you for being here. I, I will make the lecture in the uh, real and authentic Spanglish. Uh, I hope that you will understand. And the first thing that I want to say is thank you. Thank you to the Rainier family, also to the Nelson Atkins and the Kansas State University, to Matt Knowles, also to, to, to Vladimir Kristik for, for his help. And for us, it's, a, it's really a, a pleasure to, to be in this list of these big architects that some of them are our friends, like Alberto Campoesa or that, like Jay Silver Morgan. It was a pleasure to work with him during this year. And next year, uh, Fuen Santaniec. Okay, uh, this is uh, what I want to, to say thank you to all these people. And I want to, to say also that uh, all the projects that we will show are projects that we make together with a big team in, in Valencia. And Pablo Camarasa, that is one of the partners that is here uh, with us. And it's also a pleasure to be here. Okay, uh, what we want to 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 show you uh, is some of the most representative works uh, of the studio and to tell you the story behind each one of them because after all uh, our work is about creating a scenarios for life. The first project that I want to say uh, to you is the Atrium House because the main thing of this project is this uh, central void that it has a, a a very big volume, it's an infinity volume because we have the, this dimension, this dimension, and all these dimensions. And unlike the neighboring and the houses, uh, with the building in the center of the plot that you look here, uh, we prefer to, to build the house in the boundaries of the land and to, to have this, this void in the, in the center. And we do that because we want to emphasize the, the feeling of spaciousness. This is one of the first models that we saw to the owners with the relation between the interior and the exterior. And this is the final, the final uh, feeling of the house uh, with the swimming pool. And we, we put uh, the pillars inside this furniture that you, you will see that we like to make disappear these uh, structural elements. This is uh, the main plan. And this is the plan of the basement because we have to put part of the program downstairs because they want to, to make a very big house and we, we need uh, this space uh, to put all the program. Uh, the house is quite opaque toward its surroundings and it's open to the inside. Uh, the access has a cinematographic feeling to it because you enter, then you, you go inside and uh, you ring the bell, the owner opens this door, so you walk in this, in the, with this wall, and when you are in this point, you can watch all the atrium, all the interior. 
This is the skylight in the, in the main space. And we like also this relation between the interior and the exterior because in, in the Spanish weather, you can live almost all the year outside. No? And to, that's very important. Another, another important issue in this house is that the client the, that is called Jose Luis wanted to get up in the morning and directly uh, dive into the swimming pool. So we respond to that request and now Jose Luis is very happy because he wake up and goes directly to the swimming pool each day. And another characteristic is that we want this, this color, this blue in the swimming pool, but we use the same white marble that in the rest of the house. And at the beginning, uh, we are not sure what the color of the pool will be using this marble, but when we fill uh, the, the pool, we start to fill the pool, and at the end is this light blue that uh, we love. There's some details of the interior of the house, and downstairs he has a big garage, and now he makes a lot of parties there. And also this courtyard, this English courtyard, where the, the guest uh, bedroom opens and, and a studio and other parts of the program that is necessary. So the next uh, project is the house on the cliff. That it is uh, a very beautiful place in, the, in Spain, uh, looking to the Mediterranean uh, Sea. And the client's desire was to have a one-story house. When we arrived to the plot, the plot had this pendant, and Azucena, that is the name of the woman, say, I want only one store. I say, it's impossible to do that, but at the end, uh, we did. And we did a, a house in the air. This is the house on the air. And also we did a quite cool in the lower part. This is an uh, amazing space that it's open directly uh, against the Mediterranean Sea. And in order to do this project, this is the, the, the level of the swimming pool, is the level of the garage, and the main space of the house. But the interesting story inside this story is that we have to make a formwork and a scaffolding to, to develop this structure of reinforcing concrete to make this cantilever of 18 by 8 meters. And the forward for this structure is a, is a structure itself. And this is the process for uh, of forward stripping. And we develop this, this process in the old way, in the traditional way, because all the persons, the constructor and the architects are there. So there is a man cutting this scaffolding very slowly. And then the old structure make a very low noise and then the structure start to work. And it was a very interesting and very amazing moment for us. No? The constructor always say that he wants a pillar here. No? He said it will be very more cheap to make a pillar, a column in this, in this part, but okay. Now where? <laughs> <laughs> and this is the the interior of the house that is like a terrace open directly to the, to the exterior. And in the other part, um, in the interior, it changed completely because the house looks out to the rocks of the mountainside uh, recently escaped. So now this is the, the beautiful uh, views in this in this place and the cantilever now that is much more cheap to make this structure than to move or to make a very big earthwork. And then the level of the garage. And now here is a very small video about this, uh, how this, this place, this, this stair is for us. Is
very happy with this, ha with this house because also the model now is my wife, and <laughs> I am happy. <laughs> Okay, the, the next project is uh, uh, the House of the Seven Gardens. That is it's a house located in the south of Spain uh, in a very rainy place, in a plot of uh, 10,000 uh, square meters, completely surrounded by garden, where we asked to design a house that will in integrate in its surroundings. So what we decide, because it's so big, big the house and we don't want to destroy the landscape, we decide to define an aggregation system that adapt uh, to the topography. And we want to use the same stone that in the, in the surroundings, because we want to make something that is more near to the nature than to the architecture. And then this, this building uh, is adapting completely to the shape of, of the, top, the topography. And uh, we, we, we think that this stone will, will erode over the years. With, with the pass of the time, uh, the house will disappear in this surrounding and the stone that is called Sierra Alvira stones uh, will change. This is the interior of the house. And after the program, uh, we, we put the communication course in the strike part of the, of the house. And after the rest of the program, it's solved in the, in the different levels. And uh, we are very excited to make this project because uh, there is a uh, very amazing views uh, between uh, Granada over there. And it's the Alhambra's uh, mountain, you can see until Africa. It's in a very rainy place in the south of, of uh, Spain, and we want to, to start this project now. This other project is the, the house on the mountainside overlooked by Castro. And this house is in a very beautiful mountain, and we have in a castle in the top. And in Europe, it's very hard to work in this kind of uh, environment. Uh, because we take more than uh, one year and a half to have all the permit. We have to, to talk with a lot of institutions to, to do it. And the interesting thing about the project is that it's the result uh, of a reinterpretation of the surrounding architecture in the contemporary time. Uh, we build the, the entire house with one line. This is this line uh, that composed the wall facade. And what we couldn't do is to have a high contrast. We don't want to make a high, con a high contrast. We don't want to make an historicism. And we don't want to be in the middle. We, we want to transcend the, the situation. We try to transcend this, this situation. And uh, for example, to, to respond to the normative, we have to, to manage the way to do it, because uh, we need a, a pitched roof with two with two pendants, and we have one pendant until here, I, sorry, one pen, pendant until here, and here inside have this safe, so we can pass this part. Also, we have to make the windows with wood, and we do it. And the, the most difficult thing is that we need this kind of element here, that they say that it is a traditional element, and we study each one of the houses of the town to say that there is no characteristic element. We have so different uh, solutions that we don't need to put this, this element here. And in, in the interior is also interesting the, the, the communication core that we have. And well, you can watch here the, the relation with the surroundings. And it's interesting, the, the distribution, a uh, central communication core with a skylight illumination that articulates uh, the wall house and provides a very special light to the interior. It's the process of construction of this, this line and with all the windows. And this is the interior space with the skylight and uh, we are often uh, asked about uh, 
the white color in our architecture that is a very traditional. And we are not afraid to use colors, but what we do is actually use different shades of white. In this case, for example, the white tone is given by the stone used, what kind of a stone, and then we use the 90, uh, 16 uh, color white, which is the most similar to this stone in the exterior, but the, uh, in, the, in, in the interior, but in the exterior, we change the color of white. And we, we like uh, this house because we do it with a very, very low budget. We have no budget to, uh, to buy the, the, the light, so we have to design in some special lights for this house in polyethylene. And we are very happy because uh, now the, the owners and, and the daughter of the owners is, have a very strong identification with her house. And that is very special for, for us. And this is the, the last vision that you can watch all the, the castle in, in this courtyard. You can look the rest of the, cast, the castle in the mountain. Okay, this is another house that is located in Tarifa, in Cadiz, in the south of Spain. And we have an, an uneven plot with an extraordinary views over the ocean. Um, we, we have to, to make a very big house, so we decide to make a, a kind of a staircase house because each one of these elements uh, could see uh, below the other, the other piece, no? facing directly to the, to the Atlantic Ocean, in this case. And we put the, the uh, communication elements in this part, so it's very easy because it works very well. You can have this movement, and it's, it is a kind of loop because you can also walk in the roof and goes uh, downstairs and, and we like because this is the real view and you can walk around all the house and go downstairs and we think that the, the circulations in the house is uh, one of the most interesting things in this, in this project. And this is the, the German uh, beach that is uh, very beautiful here in the, in the south of Spain. Also, in Tarifa, that is the place, there is a very, very strong wind, and they, they used to make a, a windsurf, and we make this kind of, of uh, courtyards to protect uh, the persons for this uh, heavy and strong wind. This is the, the central part of the, of the house, and the, the courtyard for the entrance. And we are very happy to, to start this project. This other project is another house, but this is a, mm, a much more complex project because it's a refurbishment of an existing house, and they wanted to change its appearance, but keeping the pre-existence, uh, respecting the structure of the house and also the placement of each one of the spaces which made our job quite complicated. The question was uh, how to reinterpret the existing volume but adapt it into the contemporary time and the identity of the current users. This is the, the previous stage of the, of the house and this is what, what we do. And uh, the house uh, was organized in semi-levels. We don't like to use semi-levels, but at the end we are happy because it, uh, it makes a lot of different spaces in the, in the house. This is the model of a studio. This is the preview situation because this house was for this family for three generations and they have a very strong story. Each corner of the house have a very, very strong story. So we have to respect each space. We have to respect the structure. We have to respect all. And this is their, their result. And they have this kind of semi-levels in the library and we have to, to respect all this, this part. This is the house at the end and the, the new identity of, of this house. And um, we, we love this kind of semi-levels, each one of them with one story. 
or the, the interior swimming pool. We, we made this skylight with mirrors and with these two windows at the end, the light, the uh, daylight is like if you are in the exterior and make this kind of, of different lights in the, in the interior or the different levels. And in the interior, uh, the structure, the, the old house is inside. So we have to respect the structure that is in, in this element. Or the library, the kitchen, and we respect all these spaces. We make a joke because the owner say, goes, I, have, I go to the garden and say, you can eat this uh, fruit. And then the owner say, you are eating my mother. I say, what? It's because the, the mother is in the, in the garden. He died and he's in the garden. So you can realize the strong story. We say that is the house with two ghosts, no? <laughs> but now I think that the ghosts are happy with the house. <laughs> and also, when we finalize the house, they ask us to make a, a small a guest pavilion, the, the pavilion have 60 square meters, and they, they have a lot of guests now, and, and we like very much this small, small, small house, because their relation with the garden, with this tree that is a liquid ambar that, that changes a lot during the year, it's, uh, it's very special. So and in this small house, you have your, your bedroom, your main space, you have a kitchen. It's very small, but depends how you work with these screens. You can be directly open to the garden, or you can be open to this space that is a, a kind of, of patio or courtyard. And now they have a lot of friends going there, and it's a good place. And also, when you open this part, you are completely in the, in the garden. We have a video here. Valiant House, and this house is located in a small plot with a golf course where the owner wanted to build a very big house, bigger than uh, what was actually permitted in that land. Uh, what we did is to study very carefully the uh, legis legislation of the area, and we discovered that everything located under a double-pitched roof uh, didn't compute for the building area. That that is the reason for this kind of geometry here in the, in the roof. It's the normative that do it. Also, uh, as the house is very close to the, to the limits, to the uh, boundaries of the plot, we decide to take this wrong geometry also to the plan of the house, making the house visually aerodynamic. Uh, with no edge, the house looks like it has no end or no limits. And we, we make two in innovations in this house. The, the first is the facade. All this facade is made with a, a solid surface material with a simple curve that uh, doesn't require thermoforming. Also, the facade and, and, and the roof is made with the same material. And they don't need to, to make thermoforming because we put in the fabric this material and have this shape after they put in the building and it's working very well. They have a, a very good vision of the golf course. And the other innovation is uh, a structural innovation. They, the house is supported uh, uh, only by four pillars. The roof uh, constitutes a cell made of reinforcing concrete for which the first floor slab hangs. It's, uh, it's, it's very thin, it has 20 centimeters only, 
but it works uh, very strong. And, and we have a little time, little, little time to, to develop this project, only three months for the project itself and nine months uh, for the construction. So the decisions uh, were frequently made in situ. For example, the shape of the swimming pool, we don't, we don't know exactly if we prefer to have the same shape that in the interior or we, we prefer to make the shape of the exterior building. And there were the men with the machine in the, in the plot saying, well, what I have to do? It's a round swimming pool or a square swimming pool? No, at the end, we, we decide to do it a uh, round swimming pool, no? And we do it. Because in the interior, we have to make the a square of the elliptical shape. No? We make this a square to use all the furniture, and after we put the technical parts of the, of the house here. And here, it's, it's easy to understand how the uh, structure uh, works. Admission to the golf course and the ventilated facade. This is the, the interior because uh, we always like to give a non-material present to the clients. And in this case, it is uh, some sort of light rug. Uh, the bill acts uh, almost as a sand deal in which this light rug transforms the space with the, pace, the, with the passing of time. Is the interior elements, oh, also the roof with the same material. This is a small video. This is interesting because. is the Hoffman House. Uh, this project is, is designed uh, with a premise to face a way for the neighbor vision and looking out of the for the distant views of the, of the sea. Uh, for this aim, we make this uh, a structure with the test shape and we have only, we have only two elements, this, this a structure with the test shape and this in furniture made with aluminum and then the neighbor that is here uh, it's a way, the vision of the neighbor, and we can look to the to the far vision of the of the sea. That's the study models and the first renders of the house. It was also important this to make disappear this corner. And the interior of the house uh, works in an orient oriental way, no? because inside this furniture are all the bedrooms and the bathrooms, and you can walk around. Uh, you have here the studio and the main space of the, of the house. And downstairs, you have the other spaces. And now we, are, we finalize more or less the house, and you have, have here the, the structure and the, the interior furniture. And also, it's interesting the process of construction because also we, we have only four pillars. This is the other house uh, that is very near, so we want to be out of this, far away of this vision of the house. This is the passing end. This is structure. Okay, we have already watched some of uh, the houses that we have already done, and we have we want to explain some of. Uh, much bigger uh, projects. Uh, this one is, is uh, a very interesting project to us because it's a tower that produces uh, energy with wind power in urban centers. The wind power is normally hard to produce in non-urban environments due to the loss of energy 
uh, west in, the, in its transport, almost 80%. What we did here is place three communication cords, this one, this one, and this one, uh, very slim, and in the interior of the tower, we located 400 wind turbines, and these turbines are, are here, for these 400 wind turbines. Uh, these turbines are covered with a metal mesh, a uh, deployer, which allow their air to come through, and at the same time protects the birds that could come close to it. This way we achieve to generate a massive amount of uh, electric energy. This is the, the real scale prototype that we, we built and we are testing it and it is working uh, very well with the deployer system and the, the plans of, uh, of the house, of the, pro of the tower with the communication cores and the wind turbines. Uh, at, at the top we have a, a restaurant and this is the project. We, we take more than eight years to make this project and to make this investigation, but now we, we are happy because uh, uh, we hope that we will build it in, in Valencia, in the harbor of Valencia that we have been working with the students. And we are very happy to uh, start to, to, to build this, this big tower. Also, the, the geometry, the tower is modified depending of the point of view of the user and the illumination. For us, it's a kind of a sculpture in the, in the landscape. It's a, a, a mark in the, in the landscape. The other big project that we are making now is the Mondraker headquarter, that this project consists in the construction of the headquarter of Mondraker, that is a Spanish company that specializes in the manufacture of competition mountain bikes. Uh, in this case, we want to create a piece with a great interior atrium and a grand access. The different plans, the project, this is the, the big entrance. You go inside, and we, we have always in our mind the um, Gordon Boonstaff uh, Library in, in, in Washington that we love this project. And the entrance of this project is incredible. So we want to make this big, uh, this big exterior hole in the interior. And after you go inside. And they produce the bicycles because the trucks arrive to the basement. They start to produce the bicycles. And at the end, with the different levels, you can uh, test the bicycles in the roof because it's a kind of velodrome no? that makes sense with uh, this kind of uh, uh, bicycle. And it's also interesting because this geometry in an industrial place uh, makes that the, the, the project is more strong no? because it's, it's a, some strategy also used in the volume house it, and it gives uh, the building a representative value reinforcing the, comp the corporative identity. The other space and the, uh, all the offices in, in the interior. This other uh, project that is already done is, is a office building in Valencia uh, for the water company. But in this case, the project was about taking a given building, disassembling it in pieces, cleaning each one of the pieces, and assembling it again. This type of intervention reminds us of the pleasure of restoring an old object, uh, like for example, an old flex lamp, replacing the obsolete elements, painting it, and making it work again. And in this case, adapting to the building to the new requirement and uses, because it used to be a, it used to be a, a housing, and now it's offices. We put all the, uh, uh, all, the, all the, the services spaces here, and it's a, a open space for the for the workers there. And this is uh, we like very much this old building, and we find this space in the in the top floor that is now a very representative space of the. Uh, They use a lot of this terrace now. 
and in the interior, we also make the interior design and adapt the, uh, all the elements to, for the new function of the, of the brake. This is the landscape space to work and the entrance for the, the hall of the building. Okay, and we finalize with, the, with this, the big project and we want to show uh, some uh, small projects no, that we like also this interior design project, like the wine shop Vega Mar selection. Uh, this project is a small commercial premise it's a very small place to, to sell wine in the center of Valencia. Um, and our goal was to make a space look much bigger. So we, we used two strategies. One of them is to, to make these black walls with a lot of reflection and uh, white color, gray is, white is more gray color in the roof and in the ceiling. And the other strategy is to put this mirror in, in, a, in one level that you cannot look your reflection. So with two, these two strategies, it's, diff, it's very difficult to, to realize what is the dimension of the space because at the end it's a very a small space and you go inside and it seems to be much bigger. We also designed with a friend all the wine bottles and all the, the graphic design of the, of the store. And at the end, you have this, um, this part to, to taste the wine. And now it's, it's working very well because the persons uh, use it a lot and they, they can show, the, the owners can show the, the wine in, 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 in the interior of the city. Another uh, small uh, project is the Petra Stone Atelier that is also in the center of the city. And uh, the Petra is a company that is specialized in the commerce of stone with over a hundred different types. And they wanted to place in the center of the city of Valencia uh, to, to show the, the, the material. But they have a lot of reference. They have a lot of stones and we don't want to make a bazaar in this part. So we, we uh, say to the clients that we want uh, to make disappear all the stones. All the stones will be inside the furniture. And if you want to watch one stone, because they have a lot of colors, green, red, all the colors with different uh, aspects. So you have to go inside with this round space that is a kind of crown leg, because the, the name of the brand is Stone Edge, that is like the crown leg, the, the Britannic crown leg. And then you go inside and you can watch the, the stone that you, that you want. No? You go in this space and then you can open and watch exactly what kind of a stone you want. And after you can go inside this uh, space that is a, a meeting point when you, at the end with the, with the uh, clients, you can go inside and talk with him. And now it's, it's working very well because it's not, you have a lot of stones in a small space and you can show exactly what stone you want to show. And you have the offices of the brand are also in the, in the same space. So they are working here and you have the circulation inside this space to watch the stone. The doors are made also with, the, with these big panels that you can change and show different kind of of materials uh, facing to this modernist and beautiful building in, in Valencia.
last project in, in this small scale that I want to show is the ARED offices uh, project that is, uh, this is in, in Valencia. We have one street here, another street here, and this super strange shape. I, we don't know what we can do with this uh, space. No, it's very difficult to do something there. So what we want to do is to make the orthogonalization of the space, and each one of these spaces have a different part of the program. We don't want to put this, this uh, usual lights in the that, that are in the offices, and we prefer to use this kind of lights that have the same level of illumination in the desk, and we change the color of each one of the of the spaces depending of one part of the program. So we have this kind of uh, optical uh, effect no? I, that change depending of the point of view and organize uh, the space. It's like a, a kind of a anamorphosis, a visual anamorphosis. And then you know exactly what part of the program is in each, in each uh, part of the interior. Also, in the entrance, we have uh, a lot of columns, very, uh, it's a very bad with a very bad distribution. So we put this kind of furniture to organize the space, to organize the sequence uh, until go in inside. And we have another level of offices upstairs. And for the air condition in the facade, we have to put a very big space for the air condition. So we decide, okay, we will do it all the facade with the air condition system, no? And it's working very well. And the last project that we want to show is the Blau collection, with, that is a, a furniture collection for a, a for a Spanish brand that we uh, we asked to reinterpret it a piece of furniture which is typical from here for USA in is this chair with a long uh, back leg very dist distinctive and to do this reinterpretation in aluminum too which is very is the representative material so what we do is to 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 do this this is the the main piece of the collection Maybe you understand what furniture I, I am talking about with this shape. And we do it with aluminum, like uh, rem it reminds of a textile system. And we have to, uh, we are happy now because we are making a lot of design of product that we use in our projects. And we are developing a lot of products that we would like to, to use after in, in our projects. They is done with the, with the aluminum system, and all the, all with the with the same material. And also these trees, because at the beginning the owner of the brand arrived to the studio and say, "Okay, uh, you have to design something for me." And we bring the the trees that you, we use in the in the models, and we change the scale. And okay, now they are producing it. No? <laughs> It's, it's fine, <laughs> and it's working like a lamp. No? And also was uh, for us a funny story because the, the, the brand make a photo shooting with two models and a, a small child that uh, didn't want to be with the models. The child was always uh, crying and going to everywhere. So at the end, we can make only one picture with the child. I think that is here. And this is the representative uh, chair. And this is the chair, the small <laughs> girl. <laughs> this is one of the person that uh, put the furniture in the, in the building, and only they can stay one second no looking to the model, look. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's all, but to conclude, 
uh, what we wanted to do is to share with you our work and how we create this kind of scenarios for life. And if we had to sum up what motivates us, this is this will always be the the search of uh, efficient beauty. Thank you very much. <laughs>